Welcome to W's Repairs, I'm W the Fixing Elf. In this video I'll show you how to change the rear brakes on a Mark 1 Citroen C4 Grand Picasso. So let's get started. The first step we need to do is open the brake reservoir. So we just open it up like this. Nice and easy. Now we need to jack the car up. I put an actual stand as you can see here. And I've already loosened the wheel nuts. And now we'll just remove the wheel nuts and remove the wheel itself. Really quite a straightforward job. It's like it's jacked up and we'll just quickly whip out these four wheel nuts. It didn't take very long at all really, just with them out, especially it's the extra speed I'm doing it here. And I'll just remove the wheel. Just a few moments, there's the wheel, just pops off nice and easily, something a bit stiff and stubborn, and that gives us access to the brakes. We also need to take the handbrake off, so quickly whip inside, put your foot on the brake and turn it off, you'll see the lights go out and our handbrake's off, this makes it easy to remove the brake assembly itself. So we're going to start off by removing the 30mm bottom bolt, this is also held in by a, 30, a T30 but this one is rounded off, so I used a 30mm spanner and a bolt lower down, I'll show you that a better look at that in just a moment, but as you can see there's it all rounded off inside, which wasn't very helpful. But I just did a 30 mil bolt further down, you can see here. You have to remove anyway. Just broke it off there and left that little knobby bit on the end. Now we've got another 30 mil to remove. I'm using a deep socket here, just to give you a bit of access. You can also use the extension in a short socket. And yeah, we just broke it loose and remove it. And these are the two bolts that hold the caliper onto the caliper bracket. They're quite straightforward, really. Let's whip it out, get it all the way out by hand. Yeah, just pull it out. Now we're going to remove the caliper itself. We need a screwdriver here just to pry it off and get it nice and loose. You can't pry on the piston itself because this is a wine back piston on the back. So just use a screwdriver as I'm here or a pry bar, anything really that you can get in there, just pry on it and just get it to pop loose. And once you get it loose, just give it a gentle wiggle near the end and it'll pop off the brake pads. And yeah, it does eventually come loose, just a bit stiff. Be careful because it has still got the handbrake cable attached to it, so you don't want to pull it too hard. Just make sure you keep supported and everything. And once you get it off, we'll hang the caliper up. And you can see there's the wind back piston, we'll rewind that later. But for now, we're just going to move on to the next step. I forgot to record me removing the um, brake pads, but you know, basically they pop out nice and easy. Now I'm going to take a T50 and a breaker bar, and we're going to break it loose. The two caliper mount bolts. So, yeah, they said the T50s on this. Just get it a nice good long breaker bar. You can do it with a ratchet or an impact, but I'll use it with this little breaker bar. It's quite a handy little tool. And that's the bottom one loose. But not completely loose, but they've started, and you can then get them with a half inch ratchet, which I'll show you in a minute. But yeah, just get them loose. Make sure you get them nice and square, because these are pr prone to rounding off. So you want to keep your tool as straight as possible. And now I'm going to get my T50 on a half inch ratchet, and we're going to work out. Try and get it nice and square. And then you see it pops loose. And we'll quickly whip out these two caliper mount bolts. They are held on with Loctite as well, so it makes it extra tough. First, the first one then, loose. We're going to loosen the top one now, and then we'll work our way out. Working them both out. We just sped things up so you don't have to sit through the timing, because they are quite tough to get out sometimes. They can be a bit stiff and a bit rusty. The thread does protrude a bit out the other side, so. It's a matter of taking your time and working them out. You don't want to round them off, like I said. You don't want to break them off, because that would be a pain to replace. And once you get them off, the caliper mount will come off. Quite simply and quite easily. Here's the last bolt coming out now. With a two, and that's that one out. There's a caliper off, and there's two bolts. Now we're going to pry off this little dust cover. You see the screwdriver and a hammer. So you can't see the hammer here, but basically all I'm doing is getting the screwdriver lined up. And giving it a gentle tap from the other side and get a good grip and then it will knock off this dust cover. You do get a replacement in most of the brake disc kits, so that's quite good. Yeah, just break it off. And then you can see the um, actual nut which is staked in, as you can see here, staked in, in two places. So we'll get a punch in a moment and we'll knock it knock out this stake so we can get this bolt off. This is the most trickiest part I found. You're just getting it to come far enough up so you can um, remove the nut. But you have to keep tapping away with a. I used a punch and I used a screwdriver in the end to get it all nice and loose. 
As you can see, just keep tapping away and you just, the metal will bend back out. And then get my screwdriver and just give myself a bit of extra leverage. Which is always quite good. And yeah, now we're going to do the other little stake that's on there. I don't quite know whether this one's double stake. Normally they're only single stakes and the other side was only single stake, but this side had two. I think someone may have started and couldn't get it in, so I moved the nut around. But if you always like, just give it a gentle tap out and it will just give enough movement and looseness to get it off when you break it loose with the um, socket in a minute. Just want to make sure there's enough gap between the axle and the axle nut. So I'm just going to use a 36mm socket here. This is a 12 point socket, a 6 point would be far better, but there's a bit of slippage. But you just want to get the breaker bar on it, and with a bit of persuasion, you can get it to bite in and move it. It can be a bit tricky, as you can see here. But yeah, once you get it to break loose, it'll move, as you can see here. And yeah, like I said, someone did say they are meant to be 35 mils, but I've never come across that. Like this 36mm socket has always worked for all the ones I've done so far. Like I said, this is a 12 point, a 6 point would be a bit better, and it pops off nice and easily when you break it loose. It's not going to be that tight, and the disc comes off nice and easily. Now we're going to clean up the behind it. There's the ABS sensor, so be careful with that with your wire brush when you're working around. Just give everything a nice good clean, and wipe down. Your blaster will some brake clean in a minute, just get everything nice and clear. Just using the wire brush helps remove any contaminants, especially around the ABS sensor. And also makes it easier for when you put the uh, grease on in just a moment. So I'm going to use a bit of CV grease here. I just lube up the shaft on the axle here. I find CV grease is the best thing for this. It works really well and doesn't really interfere with the bearing inside the new brake disc because the brake, the wheel bearing comes, the rear wheel bearing comes inside the um, brake disc on these. So now we're going to clean up the brake disc. Just a bit of brake clean, just a tiny bit there really. And yeah, just give it a quick wipe. I always like to wipe the back off first, and then we'll slip it on, and it just goes on nice and easily. And yeah, nice and easy. Spins really freely, that's what you want. Now I'm going to clean the front up, just give it a nice good clean. Again, just blast it off a bit clean, give it a quick wipe down with a towel. And it comes off nice and easily. Now I'm going to put the new nut on. Just throw it down by hand first. And now we're going to torque it down in just a moment. First, I'm going to as tight as possible with my half inch ratchet and the 36mm socket to give a good tap. Again, it doesn't have to be terribly tight because we're going to torque it down. The torque spec for this is um, 210Nm, is what it said on the box will come with the brake disc. So that's what I'm going to torque it down to. Get it nice and tight. Now we're going to stake the um, nut in place. Just use a screwdriver and a hammer and just pound it down into the little groove here, as you can see. And this will help hold it in as well. So that's another good thing. Just tap it down nice and easily. And yeah, just pull it in, makes a nice good indentation. And make sure you get this really firmly down. I'll give you a closer look at it in just a second. As you can see, it's now tapped in really nicely. You can also use a punch to do this, but I used to find a screwdriver was easier. And now we can start reassembling other bits. So here comes the um, dust cover, the hub cap. And you can use a rubber mallet here and just tap it back on. So yeah, just tap it down nice and easily. Then it all taps around the edge, as you can see here. My rubber mallet has broken, so I had to be very gentle with it. Now I'm going to clean up the caliper mount bracket, so just give it a good old rub off with the wire brush. Wire brushes are really handy for this, particularly this style one. It seems to fit perfectly in the gaps, and you give everything a really nice good clean. And we'll hit it with some brake clean. You can go wild and get it on a drill bit as well if you really want, but unless you don't need very much at all. Sometimes the brake dust can be really crazy on there. Now I'm going to whip out the um, old caliper slide pins and give, grease them and lube them up. So, quickly whip this one out. And you want to do one at a time because they are sided. So just give it a good nice wipe and nice clean. Get all the dirt off it. I'm going to hit with a brake, bit of brake clean too, just to make it nice and clean and give it another quick wipe. I'm also going to clean out the rubber a bit, a bit with a bit of paper towel. Just get in there and wipe out any excess old grease. Now I'm going to use some red rubber grease. This is my favourite lube for slide pins. At least at the moment, if you've got anything better. But this seems to work really well for me. I highly recommend it if you haven't used it. Really good. Give it a nice good covering. And we'll slide the pin back in. Make sure everything slides and moves as it should. So that's the top one done. Or that one done. I'm going to do the other side with the same process again. 
So you can see it's got slightly different marking on the bottom of it. It's got more of a teeth mark on it. This is the bottom one. Yeah, just give it a real good clean. Clean the rubber mount as well. Some more red rubber grease goes on. Yeah, just give it a good lube up. Make sure it all slides nice and freely. We'll slide this back in. And yeah, we'll pop it in and make it nice and easy. Now we're just going to give our caliper sims a quick clean up. You can get replacements of these. I couldn't get out of any at the time when I did this brake job. So we should clean them up, give them a good clean up and we should clip them back in place. They're going fairly easy. Like I said, just clip them in. Fairly straightforward and fairly simple. Just remember to put the longest part facing the outside. And now I'm going to drop a bit of um, Loctite onto the caliper mount bolts. Just, you know, we've got some Loctite on there. We had Loctite on there before, so we'll put it back on there. Now we're going to slide the caliper mount back in place. And we're going to start these bolts by hand. So there's two of them to start as, the, as we removed them. So quickly start them by hand. Get the top one in. Once it's started enough, we'll put the bottom one in. You want to tighten these all the way down. You want to have a bit of slop and a bit of play, ideally. And here comes the bottom one now. Stick it in. Again, these are T50s, so when you're putting them back in, you need a T50 so uh, Torx bit. Quite a big one, but again, there's plenty of them about. I did a video on them as well, so I'll leave a little link to that somewhere around here so you can see it. And yeah, we just tighten them down. This is the set I used anyway. Yeah, just tighten them down now. Then I sped things up so you can go watch me running a bolt. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. And again, you can always use an impact for this. Just make sure you start them by hand. That's the key. Always start all your bolts by hand. They can't cross the third. Yeah, we'll just run it in like this. And get it nice and tight. And you just tighten them down nice and easily. Just make sure it's nice and tight when you're finished. And then we'll do the top one again. You can't really see it in the camera. Sorry about the angle. I've adjusted it. That's good. And yeah, just keep working them down. Make them nice and tight. And once we've done that, we can pop the brake pad back in. They're going fairly simply, just pop one end in and hook the other side round. So I can't see that a bit clearer detail, the angle a bit bad, but basically all you do is pop the bottom in like I did here. And just pop the other top end in. They're going fairly simple. Sometimes you can snag on these shims. Just be careful with that and they go quite simply really. Now we're gonna rewind the brake caliper back. I won't actually show you a full leaning action. You just line up the tool, you've got two little notches in it, and you pop that in. They can be quite stiff sometimes, sometimes they go really easy. And once you've rewind it all the way back, you can put the brake caliper back on. So here comes the brake caliper going back on. There are some little grooves that you need to watch out for, so, but once you line up, you'll see them and just line up nice and easily, and they'll go on very simply. Once you get the angle right, just make sure your um, slide pins are pushed in, so when you do it, just push them in. Just so you can get the space to get the brake caliper on. Yeah, be careful because it's still connected to the handbrake and all. And yeah, once you get it in, give it a good tap. And you'll see it slot into place. As you can see here. And now we're going to put some bolts in. So they put the two 30 mils that we moved before. Again, so the top 30 mils going in. Let's get it lined up and run it in by hand. We'll tighten it down properly in a moment. You can see it's starting to smooth the uh, caliper slide pin. So you need to grab a pair of pliers or a 90mm spanner. For this one I'm going to use a uh, pair of pliers. But sometimes you can use a 90mm spanner. So as you can see here comes the pliers now. Just get it nice and gripped, nice and square. Like I said, we'll run it down by hand first. And now I'll grab a ratchet just to finish off the tightening. So yeah, just quickly grab it and make sure you get the, thing, the um, caliper slide pin lined up. And yeah, just tighten it down nice and easily. And this is the top one. You can tighten this one all the way down. Once you get this one in line, it's quite simple really. And now we're going to move down the bottom and put that other one back in. So again, this one's got a little knob on the end of it. So just run it in by hand starting starting off. Just hold the, uh, again, hold the slide pin. And yeah, once you get it started, just get it Tighten it down nice and easily. Just keep running it in. Luckily with this little big knob on the end of it, it makes it really easy. Obviously, if you remove this, it's a bit more difficult. You can use a spanner or a socket then, but now we just tighten it down with a 30mm spanner. Again, just work around and get it nice and tight. 
like that, and it's all done. Now we need to put the cap back on the brake reservoir. And put the handbrake back on. And then we just need to pump the brake pedal, get it nice and firm, and we've just changed the brakes on a Mark 1 Citroen C4 Grand Picasso. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more. If you enjoyed this video, why not drop a like? Any questions or feedback, let me know in the comments. I normally drop two videos a week. So if you haven't subbed to the channel yet, you should, and then you'll never miss another video. Do you know anyone else who would enjoy watching this video? Then feel free to share it with them. Thanks for watching until the end. Have a sensational day.